In the era of ChatGPT, there's no longer any excuse to have a terrible chatbot on your website. Let's fix it. Hello, it's Ulysses here from SSW, and today I've got a very exciting topic because we have just updated the chatbot on our website, and I want to show you the process of how we chose the chatbot, how it works, and why it's amazing. So, if you can see my screen now, this is our current chatbot. Well, this, this was the chatbot until yesterday when we switched it over. It's still on some of our older pages. Um, and the problem we have is this works pretty well if you want to talk to a human. If you just click talk to a human straight away, it connects you up with you know, Seth or Camilla or someone and you can chat away. Uh, if they see the notification, if they're sitting at their desk and if they're not you know, getting a glass of water or something at the time. Um, but if you try and use the AI, it's not great. I'll show you what I mean. Um, can you help me with an Angular project? So this is, you know, someone who's a lead of ours. They just, it straight up doesn't understand anything. Um, so behind the scenes, it's got a workflow where if you ask it questions that it recognizes, it will take you down the right workflow. But that's so rare that basically in the age of ChatGPT, this is an unacceptable customer experience. Right, so what we want out of our chatbot is one, obviously we want our leads to come through and be sent to the right place. We want people to get the information that they need and have a good customer experience. If they ask a question about an event, uh, they should be told the information and also sent to the booking page. If they ask about you know, consulting work, they should be given some information but also funneled towards setting up an initial meeting. Um, but the second thing we want is that also we want to showcase that we are good at AI. Right, and right now obviously this is not doing the job. So the first thing we looked at was, um, you know, Zendesk is actually generally pretty good at this stuff. So we looked at the Zendesk marketplace, because we use Zendesk at the moment for that chatbot, um, to see if there were any sort of add-ins that we could use there. They have a few bits and pieces. We tried some of them. We didn't, we weren't impressed. It wasn't good enough. So next we thought about, right, well, uh, if we're going to build, you know, a chat GPT based or a GPT based application, the Microsoft way of doing that is via the Azure OpenAI service and semantic kernel. Um, this could work if we wanted to build something really robust, we could. It would be expensive. It would be a big job. And why reinvent the wheel here? Because this is a commoditized thing that every company needs. Surely there's a solution out there already. So we did a bit of research and we found two really good solutions, uh, BotPress and Chatbase. We've got a rule here explaining the pros and cons of both and why we chose the way we chose. So this is BotPress. Uh, it's similar to how uh, bots generally work, or well, how they worked before large language models, which is it's all flowchart based, right? It's, it's conversation similar to if you talk to someone uh, from a call center and they have a script for, you know, any way a conversation could go. Um, and then you can put in AI sections using ChatGPT in certain paths of that conversation. Now, this can be very powerful. Um, and it can work well, but it's prone to bugs because if you don't anticipate every way that the conversation could go, you can end up with non sequiturs, you can end up with, with uh, answers that don't quite make sense or just awkward conversations. So um, now that we're used to talking with ChatGPT and it's such an easy flowing conversation, it feels like it passes the Turing test so much better, that's not really acceptable anymore. Um, again, I do think BotPress could work with enough work, but it's more work than you need to do. So just to show you what BotPress looks like, we didn't we didn't implement it, so this is um, just you know, behind the scenes. But if I ask that same question, can you help me with a an Angular project? Do do do. There we go. All right. So it works, right? It says yes. We can definitely help you. Um, and then it asks me more follow up questions, so I can say um, you know it's a big one, whatever. Basically, what I'm hoping at this stage is that it's going to say. All right, so it just it just straight up got confused, right? And it, it takes it down one of its predetermined paths and it says, would you like to chat to a human? Another problem here is if I don't say yes or no and I type something in, it's going to bug out. So if I say yes, it could take me to hand over to Zendesk or something like that. So basically, this is the uh, solution for a slightly dumber AI where you don't assume it's going to be able to work. And when it when it fails, you then hand over to a human. So. Chatbase, on the other hand, works differently. Chatbase is pure prompt engineering. So what you do is you go in here. This is the back end of Chatbase. 
you go to the model, you can see the prompt that we've put in. So Manu and Seth together have worked on this. Um, and this is pretty good, but we can tweak it as much as we want. But this is exactly the same as if you went into ChatGPT and you just put in you know, a role or a prompt into ChatGPT. It's the same thing you're doing here. So if you can use ChatGPT, you can use ChatBase. It doesn't require any further engineering. Then you give it sources based on a little bit of text for things that you really want it to be very clear on. And then any websites, pages that you care about. So you can just say, give me all the people pages, give me all the consulting pages, etc." And we will have to make sure we um, add new pages to this as they go, so that this doesn't get stale. We've set up a quarterly meeting for that. But to show what this looks like, this is now live on our homepage. Let's try that same thing. Can you help me with an Angular project? So a good answer and straight away it's, it's realized my intent and it's trying to book me into an initial meeting, which is brilliant. That's exactly what I want. Let's try um, what's the next uh, public training event you're running. And by the way, you can have typos and all that sort of stuff. It's like ChatGPT, it just understands what you're talking about. Boom, it knows it, it sees all the information and it even gives me the link to book in. This is fantastic. Uh, let's try something really weird. Um, you know, what color is a green and blue squirrel? It stays on topic, right? It's saying uh, that's not really relevant to me or, or this conversation. So it just doesn't get down that path. This is useful because it's using GPT-4 um, and uh, you don't want just people asking completely pointless things constantly, so it keeps people on topic. So I hope I've convinced you, Chatbase really is amazing. Um, I, as purely a prompt engineer, am very comfortable in tweaking it and making it better. Uh, it does everything we need it to do, and it's a really good customer experience. So there you go, Ulysses from SSW TV, signing out.